Hey everybody, it's me, Super Paul Games. Welcome to a new LP. It's called Actual Sunlight. Let's do this. Uh, I'll pick English, because I'm not so good at the other languages. Believe it or not. Please note, Actual Sunlight deals with extremely mature themes, including depression and thoughts of suicide. So it may not be the funnest LP I've done. Player discretion is strongly advised. This game is not appropriate for players under the age of 18. Well, I'm well over 18, so I'm good. Do I want to continue? Yes, if I said no, it would be the world's shortest LP. Why kill yourself today when you could uh, masturbate tomorrow? By Evan Winter. Fap, fap, fap. As my friend says, the good old fap and nap. I know what you're thinking. Why keep getting up? I thought it was why keep getting it up. Day in and day out. Even though your life is going nowhere. I hate the alarm clock. Whoa. No raises. No promotions. No hope. No future. And let's face it, no love. Why don't you break that alarm clock? But don't feel bad for yourself. Feel bad for exploited immigrants who have had their fingers shattered while stocking shelves on the graveyard shift at monolithic retailers. Walmart. Feel bad for the soldiers of pointless wars who have had their arms blown off by IEDs. Improvised explosive devices. Feel bad for arthritic, long-haul truck drivers who need every firm grasp they have left for the dark roads and bottom crashing races ahead. No matter how bad things get, none of these people can live the life that you can. A life of pathetic... Dick punching resignation. <laughs> I hate when I'm resigned to punching myself in the dick. Now he's mad. You're lucky. You have food. You have water. And you have shelter. Shelter that specifically includes at least one room with a locking door, an internet connection, and a computer you don't share with your elderly parents. No king leaves you too exhausted from one type of hammering to indulge in another. No bishop lives to tell you not to bash yours. There has never been a better time in the history of mankind to be completely, cripplingly, devastatingly alone. And yet here you are, thinking about giving up on the good times. The good times of being alone and masturbating by yourself. Maybe you cry sometimes. Not realizing that you still have so much to live for. That there is still so much to jerk off to. That's true. Just discover Tumblr. After all, the world is alive! Alive with people as fat, shallow, and broken as you are. Well, that's good. Alive with beautiful women that have been lied to all their lives. You get on buses bound for your pornography. <laughs> that's, alive with the seething sadness of all our breaking dreams. I'm not supposed, trying to laugh at breaking dreams, but... And I hope that you read those words and realize that there's still so much inside of you. Just waiting to come out. I hope that's not just... I promise you... I hope you promise yourself to live to see the day that you truly fall in love at first sight. Lock your eyes onto a look you've waited a lifetime to see. Um, hit the pause button. Take a deep breath. And know what it would be like to be wanted. Even if it isn't for the right reasons. By anybody. If only for a moment. Somebody turn off that damn alarm clock. Does that mean he's got a tinkle? Uh, patient transcript, Evan Winter. Uh, doctor, why'd you set your alarm for 5 a.m. every morning even though you'd never get up for it? Why well, hit snooze for two hours? Uh, I, I wanted to start exercising. I mean, look at me. I, I had to. You're kind of big. I mean, uh, why didn't you then? I, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess the night before, you feel like tomorrow will be different. Every night you think, tomorrow's the day you're going to do it. Uh, start exercising? I start everything. All right, use the arrow keys to move, Z to interact, X to save and quit. Uh, I'm not gonna remember any of this. There's one button to hit. All right. A Sony e-reader, definitely obs. Uh, a Sony e-reader, definitely obsolete by now. Is that his voice? Creative writing, four nine seven Y University of Toronto. Instructor Everton Winter. First day lecture notes. Uh, the first thing you should know about being a writer is that it will turn you into the person who will find every excuse not to write. In fact, like many things in life, the more you want it to happen, 
the stupider about it you will get. A lot of people will never relate to this. A lot of people don't know what it's like to badly want something that very few people will ever get to have. And I'm not talking about money or fame or boners, obviously. Everybody wants the boner. That I mean, I'm talking about the deeply felt desire to say something that is painful in a way that is both beneficial and true. But without discipline, this desire will melt you into a crazy, uh, miserable shithead. That's, uh, I, I studied English for four years to know that's the proper way to say it, miserable shithead. I'll give you an example. I remember when I decided that enough was enough and that I was finally going to get serious about becoming an author. I went straight to the nearest bookstore to buy every book about writing that I could get my hands on. I was prepared to do anything, absolutely anything. You don't know who I would blow. Uh, except actually sit down and write. And that's the one thing you gotta do. There were so many books that I felt I had to read before I could attempt to write anything that I bought a $300 e-reader instead of trying to carry them all home. Of course, I also planned to actually read all the books that it supposedly I had supposedly read in school. That e-reader sat on my nightstand and collected dust for years. Wow, that's a lot of backstory. He looks kind of like a big-headed baby. Kind of reminds me of uh, Bobby Hill from King of the Hill. That boy ain't right. Um, can I check out my computer? Review awake. The Something Awful Forums by Winterred47. Oh, I think someone's reviewing the book we wrote. I'm posting this review because I think the community that's built up around this game is nothing but a moronic jerk circle. As opposed to intellectual jerk circles, or circle jerks. Other intellectual circle jerks. I really like the work of F. Scott Fitzgerald. Oh, work my dick a little more, please. People have taken the the fact that it's given some false silver artistic credibility and blown it out to ridiculousness as a way of feeling better about something that we all know is true about video games. That they are shitty. A shitty and aesthetic way that we have spent our shitty and aesthetic uh, and aesthetized lives. It's not great that the game has tender for entities that require over a hundred hours of average playtime to see? Or is it not great? That's just a way of making you feel like you could be special, which is exactly what you never have. It's not romantic that the game deals with broad themes of loneliness and despair. You're actually alone. You are actually in despair. You know there's nothing romantic about it, and none of it includes a longing gaze into the moonlight. It's just pizza pops and perversion until you have a stroke, and your parents spend their retirement looking after you. Pizza pops and uh, perversion sound like a good night, actually. Any ladies want to have that? Pizza pops. Isn't that Canadian for, like, pizza rolls? Finally, it's not filled with rich, textured characters whose relationships and dialogue will pull at your heartstrings. In real life, if somebody pulled at your heartstrings, I'm assuming those are the veins and arteries, you'd be like, No, that hurts. It is the hours of endless drivel that pro offers completely childish conceptions of intimacy and togetherness for the sole pandering purpose of tricking you into a fake warmth of delusionally believing that you can relate to something that you only wish you did. And you believe these things because you are nothing. You've never read a book that you didn't have a dragon or a laser, uh, that didn't have a dragon or a laser on the c gun on the cover. Sorry, I couldn't say that sentence because I was too busy thinking about a book with a dragon carrying a laser gun and shooting it. That would be cool. Pew pew! Rawr. I want that book. You live in a filthy dark room with a laptop and a soda stained mouse pad, and you play Awake not because it is about human beings, but because you desperately wish you were a human being in the first place. But you are not. You are not the hero. You are the monster. User was banned for this post. Yeah, whenever you see someone write that much of a bad thing, that's kind of interesting that the creator of the game put this in there. If somebody spends that much time on something they hate, that means they just want attention. Really, it's like if you walk into a room and somebody punches you in the face, you hit them or you walk away. You don't stand there reviewing the face punching. Oh, this hurts. This hurts. Why would anybody put up with this? No, you, you don't put up with it. Reason? T-L-D-R. Faggot. <laughs> what? Uh, all right. Um. My iPad, I keep it plugged in over here. Great story, bro. Transcript, late night show, guest Evan Winter. Oh, I don't have enough voices. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking to author and comedian Evan Winter about his breakout success. Now we don't have too many writers on the show, but what do you think has become a, uh, has become a bit different about your life since all of this happened? Uh, well, I, I used to sleep with an iPad. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta laugh. 
Ah, oh, and what exactly do you mean, asleep with? As in, would you hold it close? Well, it really wasn't that intimate, but spreading out with it was uh, definitely the only reason I actually needed a queen-size bed. <laughs> that was funny. Right! I fuck my iPad too! So now you would presumably sleep with women? Yes! The host was trying to see if that was his shot to get in there. Women! De 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 definitely, definitely women! I mean, I mean, you know those things with vaginas? Well, not every night. Not every night. I'm not plowing the fields every night. Even a farmer needs a break, you know? But a normal amount? A regular amount? Yeah, exactly. I'm a normal person now, and I'm, I'm good with that whole woman thing. You know, you sound like you're already married. Uh, I, I would love to get married. That sounds great. Marriage works. Uh, people always seem to think I wouldn't be up for it. I don't know why... Uh, I'd be dating multiple people at once, but I don't know. But I totally am up for marriage. Maybe it was it. Maybe it was all sl that sleepy with an iPad. Oh! <laughs> Apparently, we're award-winning author. From junior assistant executive administrator, CEO office, to director of corporate communications. Subject? No subject. Uh, I don't have enough voices. <laughs> Would you like to look at the transcript below and develop new messaging for transitional compensation interviews by COB? Program is excellent, so this problem is obviously in how your shop is telling HR to pitch it. Begin transcript. Thanks for coming in the morning. <laughs> I am a sex robot. Thanks for coming in this morning, Evan. Door closing. Sure. I wish we were meeting under better circumstances. Time and time again, I've said that the one thing we need in this company, besides our top executive talent, are young people. I love young people. Young people who don't just go back to bed instead of waking up. Young people who don't just walk around in a trance as if they have no future. Young people who won't let their peers down, even when they're asked to do more with less. Long pause. Uh, it sounds like it would be a shame to lose young people like that. I don't even know if that's supposed to be him. I couldn't agree more. That's why I really hope you'll consider staying on with us, even though your compensation package will be transitioning from a direct model to an experimental one. Uh, what's that mean? You might not get paid. Uh, a what? A new perspective? A new opportunity to really show us what you're made of. Long pause. I, I, I just want to be completely clear on this. Y you're talking about no money, right? Well, the philosophy that we're embracing is that it's something that we call life stage-based compensation. So you're going to give me some life? You're going to take it from a homeless person? We want to hone in on exactly what the needs are for each of our employee groups based on their current life phase. Silence. So, for an employee of your age and demographic profile, we know that you're, all you're really looking for is mentorship, energy drinks, and a very, very high quantity of work that will really give you an exposure to the professional environment that you're looking for. I'm 28 years old. The reason people get a job is to get paid. I'm not sure what demographic profile you're thinking I fit into. There are a lot of factors there. I mean, there are people here who have families to support. And as you'll no doubt recall from our mission and our vision statements, this is a family company. I watched three people who I know who have young children leave here with boxes this morning. I didn't know you could fire people from your family. Yeah, you can. That's exactly why we they were simply released. It would have been irresponsible of us to offer them a transitional opportunity. We care enough to get them out of here and back into the search for a paying position as quickly as possible. They have people who need them. Do you? Candidate exits. Interview ends. That sounds like a really shitty interview. Oh, what's that? No! That was years ago. I gotta get up. Alright, let's get up, Bobby Hill. Assembly instructions, sawdust, duh, dresser. By Evan Winter. A attempt to open the box, failed to do so. And rip corrugated cardboard box into pieces until dresser parts are exposed. Same thing with the way he hits on women. Rip off their clothes till women parts are exposed. Consider insistence of a two-person assembly to be a personal indictment of character and discrimination towards sad loners. Mutters homophobic indignities about the uppity Scandinavians and the perfect little shoebox existences. 
figure out that the assembly of Jester will actually require tools and not just syringe thin Allen key. Run downstairs to the convenience store that thrives on overpriced sun dries for masculine condominium man children. Buy knockoff Chinese screwdrivers for three times normal retail price. You should have a toolbox like I do. Because I'm a tool. Assemble dresser. Periodically stopping to drink alone and stretch out re-aggravated lower back spot and injuries. Screw up assembly at the very end such that dresser looks completely fine. But drawers are fixed in a place and do not actually open. Turn structure around completely. Exposing open rear side of dresser. Then remove top drawer entirely. Rendering entire dresser as a giant open hole. Realize that nobody will probably ever see how fucked up this is. <laughs> that it wouldn't be a, a criteria if any girl was actually willing to come here in the first place. And that you're probably just going to leave all your clothes hanging over furniture stuck in the dryer anyways. Live with it. Well, that's one way to deal with it. I gotta be honest, I'm not good at assembly things, assembling things because I don't bother to read. Didn't we already do this? Yeah. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Something awful forms. I didn't notice that. That's hilarious. How did I miss that? I haven't been on those forever. Sorry to fly through that again. Alright, let's go down here. I'm guessing this must be the kitchen. I, I screwed my back. Uh, I screwed. I didn't screw my back. I screwed my back up a long time ago. Now I have a fancy chair that's probably screwing it up even more. That's great. I used to have a desktop. It's gone now. I just used the laptop in my room. Yeah, all right. I'm gonna play some video games. All right, let's uh, let's wash our hands. Can we wash our hands? Uh, I sort of use this as a de facto garbage bin for anything that won't actually rot. It's full of plastic bags from Shoppers Drug Mart at the moment. Never use this. Right, let's play some games. A PS3, uh, that's the only reason I really even own a TV. We just use the TV. No cable. I tried an antenna, but all it picked up was static and infomercials. I'm still sure Rogers is charging me for it somehow. I don't have cable either, so don't worry about that, Fred. Uh, yeah. I'll take a shower first. Alright, all right, where's the shower? Patient transcript. Evan Winter. Uh, what is your earliest memory of disliking yourself? Oh, you're a mental doctor. Uh, when I was 15 or 16, I shaved for the first time. I immediately, my skin had a vicious reaction to it. Uh, red everywhere. My neck and jawline were completely covered in huge bumps and rashes. I didn't come out of my room for hours. I hate looking in mirrors or being in pictures to this day. I can relate to the pictures part. Are you sure it wasn't just poor technique? People always ask that because people are assholes or they at least look like they're thinking it. But no, I, I tried everything. It it's like piano wire stabbing your face out from the inside. I mean, because I know, because I, I tried shaping with piano wire, too. It didn't work any better. And it serves beyond, and it survives beyond every four-figure uh, shotgun solution in existence. And what happened after you came out? Uh, nothing, really, but I, I knew what it meant. This was high school. Uh, you, you saw those kids with horrifically scarring acne. And it, it, it isn't like this looked any better. From then on, I knew I was going to be one of those guys that girls would look away from for the rest of my life. Uh, that would be a very painful thing to believe. No, it was fun. It was a fucking picnic. It was a carousel. I'm like, look at me. I'm on the carousel of being rejected. That's a great time, Doctor. Well, you know, I mean, I, I guess it was the first time that I realized that you could just uh, get dealt a shitty hand. That, that there could be something wrong with you. And that no matter what, you would never be able to do anything about it. In a way, I think you were lucky to get as far as you did without learning that. Think of all the reasons in the world you could have learned that sooner. Reasons that could have been much worse. Yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about that. That not that invalidating my feelings? I'm saying I feel bad, and you're like, well, it could be worse. Yeah, you only live your life as yourself, you know? I'm going to go talk to the toilet. Uh, this place may be disorganized, but there's some things you got to keep. Oh, this place may be disorganized, but there's some things you got to keep clean. Like my little shit bowl. That's in my toilet, not my poop bowl. All right, uh, yeah, we're going to take a shower. Everybody shower now, jet, 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 jet. Patient transcript. I, that I like this game so far because it reminds me. I, n not that I've seen a doctor, 
but how you have like memories during the day that will come back and haunt you of things. You're like, that happened eight years ago. This doesn't affect my life anymore. Why am I thinking about it? Page transcript, Evan Winter. Uh, do you ever have suicidal thoughts? Uh, what do you mean? Like right now? Because when I talk with you, I, 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 I tend to lean towards that more. No, uh, are you implying there are situations where you ordinarily would? Uh, I don't know. Uh, a decision like that seems more like a, like more responsibility than I could even take for myself. Sometimes I'll just stand in the shower for a long time, slowly turning up the temperature of the water until it hurts. Eventually, uh, my body seems to adjust to the pain. I, I think I'm some sort of cyborg from the future, so I turn it up again and again. I want to see what I can do. Until it hurts so much that I can't go any further, and then I realize I'm not a cyborg. Uh, and you think about killing yourself in this way? What? By burning yourself? What? Are you stupid? I'm not saying that I think that this is what suicide is. I just want to feel something, so I hurt myself a little bit. Oh my, what? Are you stupid? I, I, I just think it's what suicide is like. So you think about suicide more than you have any other specific plans to commit suicide yourself? Is that correct? I, I, I guess. How often do you think about these things? Um, a lot, actually. How long have you been thinking this way? Ah, uh, a long time. And how does thinking about why you want to do this make you feel? Frustrated? Tired? Hopeless? Don't lead the witness. Uh, reminiscent. Is that the end of it? Go to the roof of the building and jump off. I should have used a different voice for suicidal thoughts. I don't want that to be mine. Huh. I got a lot of things to do today. I better eat something and get to the office. Gonna eat some foods, get some raisin brands in there, make it into poops. An epilogue to the weight loss book I will write one day. An epilogue to the weight loss book I will write one day by Evan Winter. Before I wrote this book, I had to reach the point where I, all I ever thought about was food. I was like, angel food cake, delicious devil food cake, you two fight, but I love you. My life went from joking about that, the, joking that nothing but pizza would give me relief to a life in which it was actually true. Do you know what it's like to wake up in the morning knowing that eating something terrible is the only happy thing you're going to have happened to you all day? I have been there, yes. It's not fun, especially if somebody else ate your food. You kill yourself at some horrific job that you're lucky to have, and when it's all over, all you want to do is forget about it, go home and have that p three pieces of pizza that you have left over, and somebody else eats it, and you're like, that's the only thing I was looking forward to today. <laughs> you took it all from me. People say you can stop, but you're so huge by now that you realize you would have to stop for years and years on end. And that even uh, then, you still might not be good enough for anything or anyone. And by the time you do it, who can even say if anyone will be left? You know, zombie apocalypse has happened. Still, you make a few attempts over the years, uh, because a part of you thinks you would be com a completely normal person if your weight didn't disqualify you from being one in the first place. Sometimes, uh, it even goes well. But in the end, you're still miles behind, and that one shitty, feel-good thing you've always had starts calling you. Pizza's like, eat me. Put your tongue on my greasy face. Put me in your mouth hole. It's calling you when you realize that she isn't interested. It's calling you when you're out with people who don't have to live this way just to be normal. It's calling you when you go out to eat with your parents. And you realize what a disappointment you are to them. What a waste of all that energy you were. All the time. It's calling you. Why did I turn it off vibrate? I love it when it vibrates. Hello? Everything is great, Mom. It's going great. Yeah, yeah, of course I'll have dinner with you guys this weekend. Yeah, I'll be there, Ma. We can eat whatever you want. It doesn't matter to me. I don't care. I gotta go to work, Ma. Ma, I got a job. I gotta go to work. I don't know what's going on with either of them. I'm sorry you don't have work to do. I gotta go. No, I know. I know. Okay. Bye. Oh, my God, Mom. What the hell? I gotta go to work. Don't go to the roof. I, I thought I had something to eat here, but I guess not. I, I'll get something on the way. All right, everybody. As long as no other dialogue things pop up, that's going to be the end of this episode. Uh, thank you for watching. I, I really am interested by this. I, I like it. It's really kind of real. I, I know that maybe not always be the funnest kind of thing, but it's cool to do something different. So I'll see you all next time.